Josh, teacher. We're very excited that you can join us in this platform where we celebrate and acknowledge teachers and talk about the teaching life. I'm very excited today to welcome our guest, Miss G. Thank you for coming to our show. My pleasure. Looking forward to it. Thank you. Well, first of all, tell us your aha moment when you decided to go into the teaching world. So I actually got into teaching by accident. I was living in Los Angeles and my best friend Kelly was a substitute teacher and I was 21 years old and broke and needed a way to make money <laughs> and she got me into teaching and within the first couple of weeks I was hooked. So I just loved it so much I wanted to continue. What grade were you teaching? So when I was when I first started teaching, I was teaching in South Central Los Angeles in a heavily wow. gang infested area. Um, you could draw a line down my class between the different um, gangs that were in the area. It was a high crime, high poverty area, but the kids, kids are kids, and they were fantastic. And uh, I looked forward to going to work every day, and I was treated like a queen. And wow. I just love teaching them. Did you have to do with any discipline issues or yes, challenges? We, well, in that area, discipline's always a challenge. Um, not that it's not a challenge in all areas, but specifically in a lower socioeconomic area, um, we had our challenges. Um, specifically, I could give you, I mean, I had 20 years of teaching experiences. Um, we, I've had to personally deal with, you know, weapons brought to school, guns, knives, um, parents that were murdered, parents that are in prison, um, parents that um, are struggling financially, kids going home with um, food that was provided by the school or they wouldn't eat, eat for the weekend. Oh so I, we, there's wow. been a lot of challenges. Oh my goodness. So for you, you were probably instrumental to these kids' lives, you know? Yeah, probably so... Probably the, the stable person in their life. Um, I'd, like to, I'd like to think so, but, um, you know, parents come first, and parents are their first um, resource. I think, though, that my education... So when I first got into teaching, my friend Kelly got me into teaching in Los Angeles, and I was not a certified teacher. Mm -hmm. So in Los Angeles, they're so crippled for teachers because there's an influx of students coming in and not enough educators to educate the students so they have what's called like an emergency credential okay and then um so i was emergency credentialed for that year but then i in order to continue teaching i had to take um continuing ed and get my actual teaching degree okay. so that's what brought me to michigan because they had oh. a program specifically geared toward educating inner city youth and because I was teaching in the inner city already, they offered me a, a big scholarship um, to come because oh I had gosh. one of the previous. I was one of the few students that applied to the program that actually had any inner city youth um, teaching experience. So um, because I got the wow. scholarship and they were willing to pay, University of Michigan was willing to pay for oh me goodness. to get my top notch university. Yeah, in yeah. so <laughs> I, that's what uh, brought me to Michigan. Um, so. Well, were there any, I mean, I think you might mention, but any cons or any sacrifices that you felt came with this uh, position? With this so I think in general, teachers sacrifice themselves, their health. I think teachers sacrifice the, uh, their paycheck. There's so few, and more than when I say sacrifice their paycheck, I mean more than one thing. First, Classes are completely underfunded in the United States, um, specifically um, public schools. Um, we can talk about charter schools too, but that's a, that's another time. So let's stick with public schools, yes. and they're really underfunded. So teachers, on a whole, I think I read multiple places where they spend at least a thousand dollars of their own money um, really? funding their classroom because yes. it's the even lack buying of money. boxes of tissues. I mean, yes. it's just the essential. Yes, you need to cut. and in where I taught we bought toilet paper paper towels and soap oh my gosh that was that was the, you know the the uh yeah i know some teachers have brought even toothbrushes for yes. some kids right is that true and if that's true yes, that's so true. um when i say sacrifice their paycheck teachers are um, underpaid and classrooms are underfunded so they're getting double hit 
they're they're not getting paid enough for what they do and then not only that then they're being asked to um, fill the deficit of what the states and the federal government are not doing uh, in addition to that teachers sacrifice their time um, I don't know how many times myself uh, have stayed after school come to school early kids need more help um, we've sacrificed the lives of our own children because instead of being with our own kids, with we're, we're someone else's kids. Right? I know. I feel uh, you know. I feel that guilt. Have you ever felt that guilt? Yes. I'm like, wait, am I paying more attention to? I'm like, I need to know what's going on in my own family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I think agree. that there's. I think teaching is a selfless profession, and teachers sacrifice a lot. And it would be nice if um, they got recognized for that. And, those sacrifices. and how can we do that in our society, in our community, our government? Do you think there'll be a time where finally people will realize how important and valuable well, it is? Because people pick on, oh, you have the summers off, right. oh, you have so many vacations. So, you know, that's how people justify saying, oh, you've got it easy. How do we change that? So it's interesting because only in the United States are teachers treated so unprofessionally. If yes. you go to China, if you go to Russia, and I have had experiences with people from both countries, um, in those countries that were teachers, and they were praised, and that is the yes. most highly esteemed profession there is. So, so like a lawyer or a doctor, right? right? Better, better, you yes. know, because they're educating the lawyers and the doctors. Wow. So um, I think that we need to have a cultural mind shift in the United States. Um, I think it's past due. And um, programs like this, I'm hoping will bring some awareness to um, beginning that mindset um, shift. So I'm hoping well, we can. Well, we want to start that posh teacher. This is the first step. We want to bring that out into the world, into the people that make decisions in yes. schools. And I know you're part of an administrative team and is an assistant principal. Mm -hmm. So we, we need we need you. <laughs> so it's interesting because I became an assistant principal after 20 years of teaching. And this is my first year as an assistant principal. And because I am so close to the time that I was in the classroom, uh, my principal has been out of the classroom for over 15 years. Wow. So the teachers feel a connection to me oh, because they know I, totally I get it, feel it. Yes. where I think the farther removed you are from being in the classroom um, the farther you removed are you are removed from understanding the challenges that teachers go through so I think you know um, and I'm digressing but I think that there should be a program where you're in an administration for a while and then you go back to teaching and then you go wow. back to administration so you have that like connection with um, the teaching profession. Um, so they get it, right? And right. sometimes I think administration doesn't they, they, There's get a it, disconnect right? between the teachers yes. and the administration, and I think because I'm so closely connected, I'm just yes. you know one step away from where I was, um, I still feel like I'm a teacher in a lot of respects. I have uh, a very good perspective. Well, moving on a little bit on the lighter side, what is your, do you have another life? You know, students are always, uh, they freak out if they see you at the supermarket. They're like, wait, aren't you in your classroom <laughs> at eight o'clock at night? Yeah. Uh, so do you have another life, Miss G? <laughs> so I have, I have a very rich life. Um, um, Wonderful. Rich in the fact that, not monetarily, clearly. <laughs> no, uh, but I, um, I have some passions. Um, I love to read. I love to travel. I've been to many, many countries. Um, I'm passionate about my kids and their activities. Um, my son just traveled to Spain to play soccer and he represented the United States for that. So oh my gosh. That was um, fun. Yeah. <laughs> um, and my daughter is a gymnast. I love oh attending God. their events. So I treasure the time I have as being a mom. Um, I love to play tennis. I love to exercise. Um, I have a personal trainer. I spend a lot of time doing that. And um, yeah, I know on the side you're an amazing athlete. She is an amazing athlete. So I enjoy doing things like that. Wonderful. Well, now we want to go into a little bit of the fashion world. <laughs> so, do you think um, what you wear? Whether it was as a teacher or as an administration, um, what you wear affects performance and mood? You know, that's an interesting question because now that I'm an administrator, I'm expected to dress a certain way because I'm representing the school. 
and I was actually told that verbatim by my boss. Oh, and then okay. I said, well, if I'm cast with the responsibility of representing the school, shouldn't the teachers be put under the same umbrella? Because with, and teaching, teaching is highly unionized, um, which I'm totally for, don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. I, I believe in teacher unions. I was yeah, a member. You need a support system. I, I was a Sorry. member of my teaching union. Every year I taught, I was a member of the union. But this is an interesting question because I come from two perspectives. Yes, I believe that you should dress appropriately for school. That, that goes without saying. And yes, I do believe that, t that students view you in a certain way depending on what, how you present yourself professionally. And that includes how you dress. So I think that students um, look at their teachers and what they wear. Um, Does it determine like the respect I that think, you all get the I feedback? I think yes, partially. Um, but again, does it help with academic performance? That's another question because I my my own children attend a district where their teachers um, every day wear jeans and t-shirts and flip flops and their scores are very very high okay. in that district. So I don't necessarily think it might um, affect academic performance. However, I do think it might affect how the students view you in your profession and how. And not necessarily how much respect they give you, but um, whether they hold you in a certain esteem. It's two different one. things. Yes, it is. We have it's teachers in my current school that wear jeans and flip flops, and you know, I can't mandate what they wear because it's a union issue. Oh, okay. However, I have nicely said, you know, you need a pedicure. Okay, <laughs> that's a good way of going around. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> well, wonderful. Well, uh, right now we have here a posh teacher is our famous apple. We call it La Manzana. Mm -hmm. And uh, there is a, some special questions in here. Okay. So you get to, I'll give it a little shake, La Manzana. Here we go, it's all Manzana. And you get to pick a question and see if we can okay, give us look. an amazing answer. Okay. So, all right, I picked one. Okay. Oh, okay, so how, yeah, there's her question. I made a difference. So can you share with us a moment where you felt you made a difference? A specific anecdote or moment in time? So again, my experience is in urban education and I was teaching sixth grade. This was maybe, I don't know, seven or eight years ago already. And I had a student that got arrested outside of school. Sixth uh, grader? Oh yeah. Oh. God. Well, he had been retained multiple times, so even okay. though he was in sixth grade, he was a few years older than that. Okay. And he um, was arrested uh, for an offense mm -hmm. and was placed in a juvenile detention facility um, north of in a city north of where I was teaching. And his mom reached out to me because I guess when he was there, he was concerned that he wasn't coming to school and how I would react oh. to that. Oh. So I went to see him and brought some work, but they actually, I found out, they have schooling within the juvenile detention system. So oh. he was oh. going, to, so school going to school inside, but he was excited to see me and I brought him some pictures because we had just taken a field trip before this happened. Oh my goodness. And I felt like with that student, my presence and, um, my presence. That's all I need. That's all he needed was my presence, and um, I felt that that made a difference. Oh my god! Ugh. <laughs> oh, so that's why teaching is uh, so special. I mean, who gets to make these connections, right? Well, and we see some of these kids more often and more hours a day than their parents. I agree. I agree. It's Groundhog Day, right? We were all right. The same and then, but I could say the same thing about my own children. Their teachers see them yes. more than they see me because they're in school for seven hours a day. And by the time they get home, there's not seven hours before they go to bed. So we want to get the top-notch people to be with our kids every day. Right. Yes. Well, could you share with us your personal quote or words to live by that you could share with our teachers out there? Um, so I think this. Um, and I read a lot and I just, it's a very simple quote, but I think, and I think I heard this probably 30 years ago. Okay. So the quote is, when you're done, you've only just begun. 
Wow. So I feel like in life, in school, when you turn something in and you think you're done, yeah. especially with writing, you've only just begun. You've begun your revisions. And then outside of school, when you think you're like, quote, done, yeah. whether it's in sports or in your leisure activities or with another passion you have, you always have a way of like reinvent like reinventing yourself, reevaluating your abilities, and you've only just begun that new like what's the word I'm looking for? Um, help me out here. When you begin a new uh, a new, well, a new chapter or a new new chapter. That's what new I'm looking chapter for. In your new life. opportunity. Yeah. yeah. So that's so it. I I think that's a great motivator for life, right? It just it not I mean it keeps you going. Yes. Okay. Because. You're only done when you're in the grave, right? Yes, you're right. You're right. So it's uh, time to make changes and make a difference. Like your question. <laughs> we are so excited that you're here with us. And, Thank you. And so wise. So, <laughs> no. And I really hope you're going to people. Just a we needed you to share this with the world. So thank you so much. Thank you. And, oh, you're welcome. And thank you, teachers. Keep teaching. Yes. Pay them more. Okay. Please. Bye-bye. <laughs> <laughs>